they varied the gamut from very sympathetic. Uh, I remember, for example, the principal at Brigham Avenue uh, when we first got to to going to be enrolled. She told my mother, "Never let them forget their Spanish. It's a beautiful language, and it'll be really helpful to them in the future." Which my mother, luckily, you know, uh, followed great advice because it really has been great for me. Aside, you know, uh, in a lot of ways, you know, just. You know, aside from economically, personally, it's great that I speak, read, and, and write in Spanish still. Uh, but, um, and then you had all the way to the eighth grade um, history professor who said, you know what I really feel bad about? It's all those little black kids because they're never going to amount to anything. Now, there were no blacks in our class, thank God. But, I mean, that's the kind of, you know, so, I mean, I thought... Well, gee, I wonder what he thinks of us, you know, uh, of the Mexicans in the class. Because at that cl that class was about two-thirds uh, Japanese. That American history class, two-thirds Japanese and only one-third Mexican. Um, and that had to do with the whole system of segregation, the sequence system that was in existence at LA Unified at the time. That there was a presumption about who, um, who was a, who's bright and so forth. And so at Griffith, we had 14 sequences. And you're basically, um, you know, uh, um, tracked in these sequences. You got number one, you were in the brightest class, and all your classes were with those kids, and you were going to, you know, you were on your way. You were in sequence 14, I kid you not, they played checkers. Those kids were basically just left to roam around in the room with no real kind of like, hey, let's learn to read, let's do this. It was, you know. They, for whatever reasons, and I never quite understood, you know, what all the issues or problems were, or whether they were real problems that kids had, or learning disabilities that kids had. Maybe they didn't have or breakfast they had, that day they took the test. Or, or, they, or they were just the mess-ups, you know, that nobody wanted to deal with, or whatever it was. I'm not sure what the story there was. I just know that I had to fight to get into sequence number one. Um, and you knew to fight to get into sequence number well, one. Well, what happened was... Um, and this goes to the, how were the teachers. My very first school experience in when I got to school, uh, after you know the, the principal welcomed us with open arms, but about three weeks later, this is third grade, um, we were sent out of our classroom. And it was a little boy, a little boy, a little girl, and myself. So I asked the little boy, I said, how come they're, they're sending us from our classroom? And he says, oh, because we're stupid. And I said, what do you mean we're stupid? He goes, yeah, because we don't know how to speak English. So they're sending us to the other classroom. And I thought to myself, well, I'm not stupid. Well, I never forgot that. Um, not only did I learn English fairly quickly to the point that my teacher was convinced that I had already been in L.A., I'd gone back to Mexico and had come back, and that's why I picked it up so quickly. Um, but um, when I was in the sixth grade, the last semester in sixth grade, I happened to have that very same teacher who had kicked me out from yeah. third grade. There I was at the end of sixth grade, you know, and I was determined to show him that I was not stupid. So I got A's. I, I fought for every A to get every A possible. So then you go to seventh grade at Griffith, and I'm in the classes, and I somehow I pick up that I'm not in the, with the smartest kids. You know, I'm in sequence number three. So I tell my mother, you know, I'm not with the smartest kids. She says, well, uh, you know, what are we doing? I said, well, I want to go talk to somebody, you know. So we went to talk to the counselor about why wasn't I in sequence number three. So he explained to us how your sixth grade teacher was the one who tracked you into the sequence, would tell them where everybody would be placed. Depending so even what, though you had straight A's, he still put you in sequence three. That's right. So I said, what do I have to do to get in sequence number one? And he says, well, you have to get all A's in your first semester. I said, okay. So I came back. Here's my A's. Put me in sequence number one. And that's why I wound up in sequence number one. 